Oh, man, this North Division. Uh, Chris, as you know, your team's the boring pick. You've won it. You've won it. Uh, you lost nine starters or 13 starters, nine on defense, and everybody always looks for the next team. So that next team is pretty much Oregon, as most of the people out there seem to be uh, making them kind of the chic pick. And I got to tell you, I just, just cut my predictions video, and I've got a three-way tie at seven and two in the Pac-12 North, and I'm not going to say because who knows when these are going to be released. I think I'm going to release the predictions before this, so it's out there. But uh, it's a difficult call, and I'm looking at the schedule right now. You do have Oregon at home, and it's a fascinating race. You can point to almost any division in college football, and you say, oh, that's the team, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, whomever it is. The Big Ten West, not uh, so much. Uh, and the Pac-12 North, uh, with more good teams, uh, is maybe the most fascinating race in the country. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, right now, if you look at the different polls, whether it's the AP or the USA Today, the Amway poll, um, you know, you look at the the Football Riders poll and, and like the Super 16 and some of all the preseason polls that are out, you really could almost put a blanket over Washington, Oregon, and Utah when it comes to the teams out west. Uh, and then you want to drill down even further, and you're talking about the North with Washington and Oregon, and then Cal making a move. Stanford's always going to be there. Um, you know, it's just it's just hard to know exactly how things are going to shake out. Um, I, I just that obviously that game against uh, against Oregon in Seattle is going to be huge, but I really honestly think that there's trap games before then. I think that. The, the game against California and Seattle, I think, is going to be a great litmus test to find out exactly where this team is at in terms of the next guys up stepping up and, and carrying the flag for the guys that just graduated, the guys that went pro. You know, are these guys capable of keeping the the progress of what those guys did in 2018, keep it at a high level and keep this thing rolling? Um, they have every opportunity to do that, and I think they've done some great work in fall, but you know, the, the, the proof will be in the pudding, so to speak, you know, we'll, we'll see exactly how they react. But then I also think that the away games at Stanford and Arizona are going to be absolutely crucial, absolutely crucial. The away game at Cal, um, you know, I mean, that was just a, just an absolute fluky deal. And that's why they play the games. You know, you, you lose 12 to 10, but it won it was a pick six by the backup quarterback when Chris Peterson decides to bench Jake Browning. I mean, just unheard of. And uh, no one, no one thought that that was ever going to happen. And so, you know, we've seen weird things. You know, you go, you go to Oregon last year, and you have a chance to kick a 37-yard field goal to win the game, and you end up losing it in overtime because the guy has to kick three field goals because Mario Cristobal calls a couple timeouts. So it's a fluky game. Anything's possible, but I do think those away games at Stanford and, and, and Arizona are going to be telling because Washington's always had a very difficult time in the desert. Even back in 2016 when they made the playoffs, they almost lost to Arizona. They had to beat them in overtime, and that was an Arizona team that I think it only won, they only won like three or four games during the season. So it wasn't a great team. It was, I think, I don't know I don't know if it was Rich Rod's second to last team. I can't remember. But he was kind of on yeah, his last legs a little bit there. He was kind yep. of struggling, fighting, fighting with it. So that was really, really tough. For some reason, Washington always has a tough time, whether it's in Tempe, in Tucson, Playing in the desert is just brutal. It's all it's always been brutal. And again, that Stanford game, you know, they lost they lost the last time they played at Stanford. They've lost the last few times. I, I think I want to say off the top of my head, I don't think Washington's beaten Stanford since 2007, which when Tyron Willingham was the coach. So, you know, they've had struggles uh, against Stanford as well. So you again going back to the Pac-12 North, it's certainly within their hands. I think the, the schedule is super favorable. I mean, all the top teams that they're playing, whether it's Oregon, Utah, USC, Washington State, they're all at home, Cal. But it, it could be those 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 couple games in the in the, you know, whether it's in the desert or in the bay. You got a you got a November game at Colorado where it could be, you know, could be a foot of snow on the ground. You just you have no idea. There's so many trip up games there, but I do think that the the schedule really really sets up favorably for Washington. If 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 they really kind of entertained, if there was ever an opportunity for them to run a table 
Um, this could be the year to do it, and it, it's simply because the schedule is so favorable. Their non-conference games are, you know, they play, they go at, they go to BYU. BYU is didn't have an offense at all last year, uh, even though I know they went up and beat Wisconsin. Uh, Washington shellacked them uh, in Seattle last year. It wasn't even close. And then, you know, they play Hawaii, they play Eastern Washington. That's it. That's it. And so if they – if they have hopes of, of, like I said, trying to run the table and trying to trying to do that thing and make sure they could get back in the playoffs, this would be a year to do it in terms of the schedule. Chris, if you mentioned uh, Cal three or four times, and as soon as you mentioned them, my thoughts to Justin Wilcox and how good he is, and then I broaden the scope to the rest of the division, and you know, Jonathan Smith has his work to do, and we'll see if he's able to do anything there at Oregon State. But other than that, man, that the coaching – in that division, my goodness, Chris Peterson's one of the best in the business. Mike Leach has uh, shown again, despite his quirkiness, man, he takes over a Washington State program that's down in the dumps, and they're going 11-2 and two last year, and they're on the brink of a championship team the last three or four years. And, of course, uh, David Shaw and Stanford, he's as well-respected as anyone. And then, again, Justin Wilcox hasn't won yet really much, but people that know and, and pay attention know that he is really good. Yeah, and if you look at Cal and you look at Oregon State, they're trying to follow the Washington blueprint because their head coaches were Washington assistants or have, have had close ties with Chris Peterson. When you look at Justin Wilcox, you look at Jonathan Smith. And then on top of that, David Shaw, one of the best coaches in the country, I think, in my opinion. You know, Mike Leach, clearly one of the most innovative coaches in America. I think you could say that. Certainly gets the most out of the talent he has offensively. And then finally he started to find – um, some some defense and some continuity there to really go with it to take this program to another level when you talk about uh, the Cougars. So again, you're there's you're right. Uh, outside of Oregon State, who is still in that building phase, you could legitimately see five different teams that have uh, an opportunity to win the Pac-12 North. I think it's that. Uh, I don't know if it's that tight. I wouldn't say it's that close. But again, no one really thought that Washington State had a chance to win it last year until the middle of the season. And then once they got through the game day experience in the Palouse and, and beat Oregon after Oregon had beaten Washington, it was always like a circular fire squad, firing squad up here. You know, they just, guys were just, you know, sniping each other. And so it was, uh, <laughs> you know, they were just, uh, they were kind of uh, taking each other out in that sense, but no one really thought Washington state had an opportunity to, to do much until Minshew really stepped up on the national stage and started really showing that this was a guy that could take them places. And obviously he took them places until the apple cup. And then, and then when they lost the apple cup, then that was kind of the end of the road. But again, taking it to the, to the 11th or 12th week of the season, uh, that was that was something with Washington State that I don't think a lot of people expected outside of uh, outside of Pullman, and who knows? I, they I don't I think they may have announced a starter a quarterback. I thought it was going to be Gage Gubru, the the Eastern Washington transfer, but I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be one of the other guys. But again, plug and play with the air raid system, y y you can always expect them to move the ball to a certain extent, no matter who is in there. I think ultimately, again, it's going to come down to the defense and, and how much continuity and, and how much of that culture that they were able to establish under guys like Alex Grinch, who's now at Oklahoma after leaving to go to Ohio State. And then uh, now I think it's I think Steve Spurrier Jr. is in, even involved in that team, although I think that's with offense. But, you know, he's you know, Leach continues to bring in guys and, and continues to have. Uh, guys that will come in and, and, and make be difference makers for them. So, again, I think the defense is going to spell the difference for them because, again, the offense, you know, air raid system, all that stuff, um, I'm not saying it kind of runs itself, but he certainly has perfected the idea of getting the guys to run his systems, recruiting to it, and doing a really good job at that. All right, folks, you're all set for Washington football in 2019 as the Huskies look to defend their Pac-12 championship. Chris Fetter's on the line with uh, Dogman 247 Sports, so join him and the rest of the staff right there for Washington football coverage. Chris, we always appreciate you stopping by, getting us set on the Huskies. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.